Hello fellow traders everywhere, Adam Hewison here, co-founder of Market Club with your weekend update for the trading week ending 11-18-11. Well, it's been quite a week, that's for sure. You know, this week, uh, before, before I start, start into that, if you'd like to win a 12-month subscription to Market Club on a touchpad, just enter today. You can find the information right on our website, uh, on the blog. And we'd love to have you enter. I think you'll find it very, very interesting. And it's a great way to look at Market Club and the rest of the world. So, hey, this week, Super Committee, Europe, and other big problems for the markets. This week, I want to give credit where credit is due. One thing that Washington does really well, you may be thinking what that is, is that they really know how to name things. Have you noticed that? Remember these names? The American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009, shovel-ready jobs, or my favorite, cash for clunkers. Remember that one? Now comes the super committee. It's not just a committee, it's a super committee with no space in between. I keep thinking to myself, what is a super committee? How is it different from a committee? In fact, I was so intrigued that I looked it up in the dictionary. The word doesn't even exist. Like a lot of things in Washington these days, it's all about smoke and mirrors followed by no substance. On the 23rd of this month, just before Thanksgiving, the so-called Super Committee is going to come out with their recommendations. It's not going to happen. Chances are the report slash recommendations will be delayed until the following week. If anyone's good at kicking the can down the road, it's Washington. Another fly in the ointment for the markets this coming week is the report by Reuters that Standard & Poor's may be downgrading more major banks. This would not be a good sign for the economy or the equity markets, which last week turned all of our trade triangles to a minus 100, indicating that the bear is back. Over in Europe, it's not much better. David Cameron and Angela Merkel continue to spar. Now, there's two professional can kickers. Here's a direct quote from Merkel. You have to be careful not to pretend to have powers that you do not. She said following remarks she made this past week that the ECB would not have to the right to be the lender of last resort under existing rules. The markets will catch on quickly. That will not work. Angela, you're spot on with this last remark. The markets do catch on quickly. Has anything really changed in Europe? Yes. It's gotten worse. In fact, it's gotten so bad that I'm thinking of starting a collection fund to buy violins to send over to the European politicians. I want them to have a musical instrument to learn how to play, as they soon may be out of work and need to make a living. Okay, enough about that. Let's go to the charts and the video and see how we can create and maintain your wealth in 2011. So don't forget to go to the blog and check out our subscription, our chance to win a one-year subscription to Market Club, Club and on a touchpad. Touch it's very cool. So here we are. It's the weekend and we're looking at catching up on the week. So here's the first market, S&P 500 cash. Look at the triangles, 100 negative score. Same with the NASDAQ, 100. So let's look at the S&P first of all. And yeah, we're looking, looking at a weekly chart, and as you can see, this is the big week down here. Now the question is, how far can this come? How far can we fall from here? Well, the potential is you could fall quite a ways, and I'll show you two measurement tools that I would use on this market right now. The first is going to be, of course, our Fibonacci, which is a really proven, really very, very accurate in this market. So you just click on Fibonacci tool right here. You see the little yellow box right here, and then you click on the highs, drag it down to the lows, and you can see we'd be looking at the 1160 area to 1180 area as a target zone. Now we're, we're 1215 right now. That's where the market closed, closed under that very important 1220 area we've been talking about all last week. In fact, if you remember last week, we were saying this is an important week for the equity markets and the markets in general because if we did close down, it would be very, very, very negative for this market. So let's see how that plays out. The other way you can measure, I'm going to put my illustrator on here, is that you can look at the measurement from the highs that we saw. Just give me one second here. From the highs that we saw right here, and I'm going to just round this off into uh, big numbers around the 1300 level right here, and let's say the 1220 area. So you can say 80 points from 1220. If you take 80 points from 1220, it brings you down to this level here, 1140. So I think that's uh, kind of like in the range of the Fibonacci 2. So I think that's going to be our target zone. 
between 1150 and 1140. Let's make it 1160 to 1140 on the S&P 500, at least initially. Then from there, we'll see. I think the market's going to be negative up until uh, Thursday. And uh, if nothing is done, I think it will be negative maybe until the following Tuesday. So let's see how that plays out. But generally speaking, this is not a good sign. This is a big down day for this market. Big down week, I should say. In fact, for the week, uh, the S&P 500 was down 3.81%, one of the biggest losers for the week. And it's also down for the year as well. So a lot to be said about that. And it looks to me like we're just rolling over again. So let's, let's go, go to, to our, our next market. market. Let me clear the screen off. Go to our next market. And that's going to be the NASDAQ. Now, the NASDAQ, same thing there. You're looking at a close. This is the lowest close we have seen in this market for over five weeks. And you can see it's just not looking that great. And you're, let's see how the other things, things tools are. You're getting very close to rolling over on the S, the MACD. And also, you're just sort of coming down, you know, in an oversold condition like you were here and here. You're still in a midpoint in this range. So I could see the market going lower. We're minus 100 on the trade trends monthly, monthly, weekly, and daily. Remember, like last week, we were talking about um, this market being the weekly was green. Gave us a little indecision in terms of the trend was not in a full-blown negative trend. Now it is, and uh, you can quite see uh, where where, where these things have shown up. So I, I think, generally speaking, we're going to see this market go lower. So let's see how that works out. And if you want to see the weekly triangles, you just simply would go on the daily. Hold on. We'll just go on the daily charts, and boom, you see it right there. At 2,597, and, and the market closed at 2,572. So nice little prop in there already. It's the weekend. I think we'll see this market come under pressure next week. Uh, remember, they slide faster than they glide, meaning they'll fall faster than they go up. Remember, look at this move here. This is an aberration in my mind. I think, I'm not sure what happened there, but that's exactly what we did go up rather sharply. Surprised a lot of traders, but that also was the end of a quarter for a lot of people. So that's I think that's what pushed the market up. So let's go to our next market. And the next market is going to be the... Uh, Industrials, Dow Jones Industrials. Now we don't have we have a little different picture there. We've got the monthly down and the weekly up, like we had last week in the S and P 500 and also on the Nasdaq. So this potentially could turn around very quickly. I would say a move under 11.6 uh, would be a negative for this market. It does not look that positive to me. It looks like it's rolling over, and uh, we'll have to see how this market behaves early next week. So. Let's, Let's look, look at silver. Silver, big change there too. We are minus 90. All of our indicators are negative. Uh, that's not a good sign for silver. And despite the rally we saw on Friday, we are still thinking this market can go lower. 31.19 is our signal for the weeklies. We're obviously trading 32.30, which is about one dollar higher. But if we put this on the weekly charts, you'll see what I mean. It still looks very, very negative. And I think we'll see this market on the defensive. Now, a little different picture in the gold market because, as you may remember, we are somewhat positive on this market because all our long-term indicators, the monthly and the weekly, are positive. But we had a pullback. I think this market's turned into a trading range because you've got a plus 55 indicating a trading range type market. Very important to remember and look at these these areas. So this to me is we are towards the top of the Donchian trade channel. You're below the parabolic. So I think we're going to see more two-way markets in this, especially with silver being negative. Um, let's see how this plays out early next week. But generally speaking, it would not be surprised to see the market come down uh, below the 1700 level, maybe get to the 1650 zone right there. So that's about another $70 lower. So next market, is going to be copper. Copper has closed three weeks in a row down, and for the week, we closed approximately. Uh, let me just get that number for you. Gold, by the way, was down 3.69 percent last week, and actually silver was the bigger booster last week as we closed down in silver 6.83 percent. So that's quite a, quite a hit. Now copper, on the other hand, closed down 1.8 percent. Not a big change, but again, very close to the 
weekly turning negative, I would say below 330. That's definitely yeah, a key, key level, level for us. us. Uh, we'll turn everything basically red on our triangles, indicating a score of 100, meaning a strong trend is in place. So let's see how that plays out. Again, it's a situation where the copper market is going to follow the economy. The economy is softening both in Europe, here, and in China, or in Asia, I should say. Then you'll see this market come under more pressure. That's that's the generally how we're seeing this this play out. And no, next market. This is a big surprise to a lot of people. If we go to the crude oil market, actually crude oil closed lower for the week, if you can believe that. After making all-time highs, moving over the hundred dollars a barrel, which we thought was a very psychological level, we came back and closed down the week 1.59 percent. Now, having said that, the trend is still up. We, our trade triangles have all turned positive, indicating that we may see further upside potential. But I think for the moment, this is going to be more of a two-way street. Uh, uh, 75 is a, considered a, an emerging trend. It hasn't quite got there yet. And obviously, you can see back here, this level here. Let me just pencil this in with my illustrator so you'll get an idea. So back here, you can see there's a problem right around the 105 level. That was a target zone. And then this zone right here. So I think that's, generally speaking, you've got some resistance at this level. So I, I would be a little bit careful about getting too excited about going long this market at the moment. I think we could see a pullback and certainly maybe more two-way action uh, before we go higher. So one thing I'd look at right now is basically you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine weeks. And if you take that progress that forward, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think this market could be on the defensive for the next couple of weeks. So let's see how that plays out. And let's go to our next market. And the next market is the dollar index. As you know, we've been positive on this market, and we have a plus 90 reading on our trade triangles, indicating the trend is up. You've had this move up, pull back. I think there's a good chance we're going to test the 80 level. We've been talking 79.90 to 79.50, excuse me, to 80 level as a target zone here. I think there's a good chance we're going to see that happening. But again, if people come out of the euro in a big way, gonna, where are they going to go? They're going to go into the dollar. And I think that's the key thing to look at. Everything is positive on our MACD. Our triangles are positive. And uh, the only thing that's a little bit negative is the fact you're below the parabolic, the PSAR. But that's I don't think that's a major thing on the weekly so much as it is on the daily. And the daily is uh, clearly on a positive mode there. If you go to the daily chart, you'll see what I'm talking about. So there it is. You've got the parabolic below. You know, let's go to six months so you'll see it clearly. So the parabolic is below. The market is still, still rising. But it closed over 78.04, big level, 78, and uh, still looks positive to us. It looks as though this is an energy base to drive this market quite a bit higher. And I think that's going to be the, if we get to the, uh, we're around, right around 78 here. The, the lows, lows are around 75. If we just extrapolate that out, you can just very simply do it. Uh, 75, 78, it's three. Take it from 78, you're looking at 80, 81 on the upside. So let's see how that looks next week. But generally speaking, I am confident we're going to see that market go higher. Last market we're going to look at, oh, that's not what I want to look at. Hang on. I didn't want to miss it. And uh, OK, I'm going to put a market in here. So let's see how we can do that quite easily. And let's minimize that. So I'm just going to add the CR, which is the inflation index we follow. And we're going to look and see if we can get that. Oh, let's see. Well, you got a lot, we got a lot of indexes here, but uh, if we can't find it, it's not a big deal. Uh, CR again, maybe under all markets. And this basically, this index, uh, there's the CRB indexes. I had it right. It's under NIBOT. But basically, if you look at this market, you'll see what I'm talking about. We've just gone to a weekly signal here, and it's beginning to roll over, over again, again, indicating uh, further weakness. We've got a minus 100 in our score, which is a negative. And I think this is a, a, something you really want to, uh, to 
really pay attention to. I think it could be a little bit more negative going down to the 305 level. If we look at this on a weekly basis, you'll see what I mean. Look at the weekly. We had those two kind of like dojis, uh, which means there's an equilibrium before between the buyers and sellers. This down move is the lowest close we've seen in this market for quite some time, almost five weeks. And I think there's a good chance we'll see the market move down to the 305 to 304 level. And uh, so, so lots going on. Again, if you are not a uh, member of Market Club, this is an excellent way to try out Market Club. You can enter to win a 12-month subscription to Market Club on a touchpad. It's a very cool Wi-Fi-enabled touchpad. You can use anywhere you have Wi-Fi. And check us out. Adam Hewison, it's the weekend. I'm very excited uh, that we've had some big moves. This coming week is going to be very, very key. I'd stay tuned to Market Club and watch our 1 p.m. updates that we have. But uh, this is Adam Hewison for Market Club. I'll see you Monday. Have a great weekend.